Hello everyone, I am Ankita Grawal and in my video I will be explaining digital transmission of signals. So as we know that there are various advantages of a digital signal like robustness to noise and ease of recovery or regeneration you can say. So for this purpose what we have to do is we have to convert an analog signal to a digital conversion and we have to do A to D conversion. So various methods are there uh, for this like pulse code modulation, PCM, delta modulation and many more techniques. In my uh, discussion I will be today discussing on pulse code modulation. So when we come to PCM it mainly consists of three main steps that are required to digitize an analog signal and the steps are first we have to sample the signal then quantize it that is quantization process and then binary encoding of this. So now before applying these steps whenever we are having an analog signal with us so what we have to do the main requirement over here is we have to band limit our signal okay that is we have to limit the maximum frequency component that is present in our signal but doing this filtering we have to ensure that we do not distort the signal by deleting or removing the high frequency components that will affect the shape of the signal if you filter them out. So filtering has to be done uh, depending on what will what will the data rate and so on uh, that I will explain you later. So the following figure shows the component of a PCM encoder. Encoder means we have to convert analog signal to digital, transmit a digital signal. So the, this complete process is done by an encoder basically. So in the diagram, in the starting you see we have a analog signal over here. Then the PCM encoder as I explained consists of the three main steps. And finally we are getting the digital data at the output. So over here after sampling just see that the time axis is not discrete. That is we are having samples of the analog signals that was given at the input of the sampling block. After we quantize the signal, now what we have to do, we have to quantize these samples. Quantization is rounding of the amplitude of the sample that we have got after sampling with, uh, with certain rule. So we have defined discrete amplitude levels over here. We have quantized the signal and depending on our level, we will encode into a digital data in the form of ones and zeros. Okay. So now coming to sampling, how basically sampling is done or uh, what we require. So sampling is what we have to do. We have to take an analog signal. We have to uh, this uh, make. Uh, we have to get the discrete components. We have to get the discrete uh, sorry samples in time domain. But as we know that when we are transmitting these, so when we'll convert into digital signal, we'll transmit the digital signal. We'll do the recovery also. We want the signal back also. So whatever we sample at the receiver side, thus from the samples we have to get our signal back. So, so there is a theorem over here that will be applied for sampling. So let's suppose we have an analog signal and let's suppose we are sampling it at every TS second. After every TS seconds we are sampling the signal. So TS over here the, or the interval between two samples is called a sampling interval. And the reciprocal of it that is 1 upon TS is called as the sampling rate or the sampling frequency. So now there are three methods that can be used to sample the signal. Ideal sampling, natural sampling and flat top sampling. And after that whatever when we apply sampling process after that we get a signal that is called as PAM signal. So the figure shows the three uh, sampling techniques that, um, uh, that are there. So in the ideal signal just see we are having the samples over here. There was analog signal shown with the dotted line and we have taken some analog signal samples over here. We have taken some samples and the, the interval between two samples is TS that is sampling interval. Now see the width of these samples. These are infinitely very small. Okay. So that this is ideal sampling. This is an ideal impulse kind of signal. So you have this method is called as ideal sampling. But in the, the, this is basically an ideal method. But when we talk practically, okay, when we sample a signal, the, there is a finite width of the sample that we take. It is not very, it is, though it is very small, but there, it, there is still a finite width of the signal. Now, depending upon the top of, or the, of, of that sample that we have taken, if the top of the sample follows the analog signal, if your circuit is such that, then it will be called as natural sampling. Whereas, 
if it is constant for the entire width of the sample that you are taking it is called as flat top sampling these topics can be taken in detail so i have just uh, proceeding with it further uh, after this so now i was talking about the theorem okay so what is the limit on ts or fs that you take is there any criteria yes there is a criteria because whenever you sample a signal as i mentioned before from the samples you have to get the original signal back you have to recover the signal also you have to reconstruct the signal from the samples from a sample so the uh, theorem says there is a theorem that to get the sample back to get the signal back from a sample your sampling rate must be at least two times the highest frequency component present in the signal if you sample have a sampling rate at least this much or greater than this then only you will be able to reconstruct the original analog signal else you will not your signal will distort it you will not be able to see. so you this theorem was given by nyquist and this thus called the nyquist theorem so again i am repeating what is nyquist theorem so whenever you sample a signal just remember that the sampling rate must be greater than the two times the highest frequency component contained in the signal so uh, just remember the first thing that i mentioned in the slide was whenever you have a signal you have to band limit it now band limiting will what it will do it will limit the highest frequency component or you will get a highest frequency uh, f max will be limited in the signal okay now this is the theorem this is figure so let us suppose we have a low pass signal nyquist rate will be two times f max or if you have a bad pass signal with the min, uh, line between f min and f max your nyquist rate will be two times of f, f max two times of neck what is nyquist rate the minimum rate at which you need to sample so the minimum rate will be two times of maximum frequency component two times of f max you can gra sample greater than that but minimum rate is called as which is called as nyquist rate is two times the maximum frequency component present in the signal so now coming to the next next step of pcm encoding that is quantization so what is quantization now we have got the sample signal just see back uh, this was our sample the sampled signals that we have got over here okay so this was our sampled signals now we have to quantize these signals so what we have to do in quantization process let me explain you the quantization process first of all let's suppose you are having a signal you have a amplitude levels so you have various samples with the amplitude range lying between a min and a max minimum value of the sample values a min and maximum is a max your signal all the sample values amplitude are lying between this range so what you have to do there as you see the sample can consume any value between these two limits so you have infinite amplitude values that are present in the in, in this range so what we have to do now we have to limit them we have we have to make discrete amplitude levels and your sample at any point can take only these discrete values so what we have to do we have to we will be doing the rounding of the signal and approximation of the sample to, the, to its nearest level that will be called as quantization level so how do we get this quantization level is take your signal you know it is between a min and max values divide this min and max value between by l zones capital l zones okay so you will get l blocks l blocks each of high delta so this delta is called as uh, step size and delta you can calculate by formula max value minus min value divided by the level zones you have taken l so now when you have got zones what you have to do now is each you have to each zone you have to find out the midpoint of the zone and every midpoint you have to mid level midpoint of each zone you have to assign a value from 0 to l minus 1 so when you have l values that is you can number it from 0 to l minus 1 so any sample value any sample value at any time you will see that it will lie in a zone so what do you have to do whatever are the samples lying in that zone just approximate it to the value of the midpoint of the of that corresponding so now here is an example let's suppose v min is minus 20 volt v max is plus 20 volt so what you have to do let's suppose i am using eight quantization level my zone width will be 5 the zones will be from minus 20 to minus 15 minus 15 to minus 10 and so on and the midpoints correspondingly will be for example minus 20 to minus 15 the midpoint is minus 17.5 so i have find out all the midpoints over here so now what you have to do after third step final step is encoding so encoding suppose i have divided into eight zones so log of 8 to the base 2 will give you 3 so i can easily write digital uh, representation in three bits for eight level that line from 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 
so same so what you have to do whenever you are choosing l just every sample depending on the number of levels you have taken you can find out the number of bits that are required to represent a signal in digital value okay so 0 0 0 will be the lowest zone 0 0 uh, level number 0 and next zone will be 0 0 1 and 8th level will be 1 1 1 so where, wherever your signal is lying just whenever you have done, done the approximation or when you find out what what is level at which the signal is lying just give it encoded by the uh, value over here so this is an example and just try to solve this example so you will see that we have got the digital data over here and now what is quantization error just i want to explain whenever we are rounding of a signal so what we are doing by this approximation we are actually changing its actual amplitude value so this is the actual this is a little error that we are introducing okay so this is quantization error okay the error the difference between the actual and the coded value that is midpoint is referred to as quantization error so when you take more zones delta will be small and your quantization is going to the quantization error is going to be small but then what will happen your bits will increase because will l will increase number of levels will increase the bits required for encoding will also increase so you have you will have a higher data rate okay so what we have to do neither too layer less nor too high we have to take how much data rate we want for an application and how much bandwidth because bandwidth is related to the data rate okay so the formula here let us formula bit rate and bandwidth requirements of pcm bit rate will be number of samples and multiplied by number of bits required per samples okay so bandwidth depends on this bit rate more the bit rate it will be just half the bandwidth required will be half of this half of the bit rate that is of, of the uh, pcm signal that you have got so more the bit rate more the bandwidth required to transmit that signal okay so, so a digital signal will always need more bandwidth than the original analog signal and this is the but price this though we are having this uh, disadvantage but it's not actually a disadvantage because we are getting more robust and other features in the digital transmission we can easily do error correcting error correction detection processes over there so here is a small question for you let's suppose you have a human voice and you want to digitize it so just find out the bit rate assuming 8 bits per sample so human voice as we know extends from 0 to 400,000 hertz so 4000 hertz is the maximum frequency component so sampling rate will be 4000 into 2 that is 8000 samples per second and bit rate will be n into fs applying this formula you get 64 kbps now at the receiver side we have to decode the pcm signal so decoding is the opposite step so just let me explain you you have a digital data so 3 3 bits to data we were having just as the incoming digital data is there according to it just make the level and hold that level up to the next sample value so you'll get a staircase kind of waveform okay so now you, you can use first order zero order and any low pass filter over here pass this signal to a low pass filter which will which will which is going to smoothen the signal and you'll get your analog signal back okay so uh, second example over here so let's suppose again we are having an analog signal of 4 kilohertz maximum signal now we want to send the analog signal okay we need a channel if we send this analog signal we need a channel of minimum 4 kilohertz bandwidth now it fit digitize the signal and send the signal so what we will do we need a channel with minimum bandwidth of 32 kilohertz okay so just you can do the steps just see it okay try to solve this numerical uh, which will clarify your concepts and uh, we'll meet later again for the next topic or on how to minimize the data rate in digital transmission we can go for delta modulation adaptive delta modulation different methods are there in which each sample we'll see we can encode by one bit or lesser bits less amount of it but using the different techniques so we'll proceed it with uh, on, a, on my next video lecture till then goodbye and thank you all for listening to me thank you